Laptops, particularly gaming laptops, run quite hot a lot of the times, and this can lead to reduced performance and unnecessary wear on the components inside. So over the past year and a half, I've been on the quest to find the best laptop cooler on the market. And one that's been highly requested is the brand new IETS GT600, which was just released a couple days ago, and it's the follow-up to what's been my top recommendation over the past year, which is the IETS GT500 V2, which really revolutionized the laptop cooler market when you think about the overall design that it had. Because some of the choices that it shows kind of flowed around the market all last year, including using a single high-powered fan with the really unique foam barrier that keeps all the air pressure going into your laptop and not escaping out the sides like a lot of the old traditional laptop coolers that typically would be sold. This typically separates this style of cooler into their own category. And when I recently did a test of the top 20 best-selling laptop coolers, this couldn't have been more clear. So let's talk about the GT600, or should I say the GT600 series of laptop coolers, as IETS actually released three models. Two, which I have here that we'll be testing and I'll be sharing with you today. The main difference between these three models consists of three different things. First, the max fan RPM, starting with the basic GT600 that I have here, which is designated the B0 model, runs a single fan at 1600 RPM. The next model up is the GT600 V1, which jumps the fan speed up to 2800 RPM and adds a 1 to 3 USB-C hub that takes one USB-C in and adds three USB-A's. Then lastly, you have the GT600 V2, which I have here, which has the same specs as the V1, but adds RGB lighting around the sides, which is really the main difference. Now that you know the differences of these models, let's talk a little bit about the design of this cooler, because it's very similar to the predecessor, the GT500, but it does swap a few things out. First, the fan itself mentioned is quite a bit slower than the 5,000 RPM fan in the GT500 V2, but it's actually a much larger fan, about five and a half inches in diameter, which should provide the same cooling, or maybe even better, at lower noise levels, at least in theory. The rest of the cooler's design really is kind of follows what all the special sauce that IETS brought last year. What it really what it sets it apart is the ceiling foam border, which like previous models is adjustable, meaning that you can have either smaller laptops with a 13 or 14 inch size, or the larger laptops if you remove the included insert for maybe like a 15 to 17 inch laptop. The foam on this model, I will say, is a little bit higher quality. It's a little more dense, which I think should help with the amount of air leakage, which is really what the foam is trying to do. Speaking of the air for the cooler, it also features a removable two-layer dust filter on the bottom of the cooler itself, which when it comes to the high volume fan like this that's gonna be attached, it really makes a lot of sense. If we continue on with the design of this cooler, the build quality is also nearly identical to the GT500. It feels like a tank and it's built with a nice thick plastic shell with some really high quality feet that I will say are nice and easy to adjust. Along with some metal buckles that go ahead and keep your laptop from moving around, which is always important. Speaking of moving around, like a lot of the other high-end laptop coolers out there on the market, like the Lano or GT500, this cooler isn't going to be going anywhere, as it does require wall power, doing being able to draw up to 36 watts from the fan itself. This is definitely going to be a deal breaker for some people that want to take their cooler with them from maybe house to the office or from desk to desk. But if for desktop replacements or laptops that really need the extra performance, it might just be worth it. One last design aspect before we hop into some testing that I wanted to mention is the control module, which is located at the bottom of the laptop cooler for both the normal GT600 and the GT600 V2. Both of these, which have different controls depending on the you know, additional features, but both use what's called a capacitive interface that I gotta say I'm not a huge fan of because it's not always the most responsive and I found myself having a hard time adjusting the RPM sometimes. And it's not the end of the world because most people aren't gonna be adjusting their speed all that often, but I do wanna mention this because coolers like the Lano laptop cooler have a nice scroll wheel and same thing happened with the GT500. That was way easier to use. With that out of the way, what you probably came here for is to actually hear about the performance, so let's go ahead and talk about it. So for the performance, I'm gonna say you're not gonna be disappointed. For testing, we ran in my tried and true GL522, which as I've described in the past is an older gaming laptop that suffers without a cooler, making it a perfect example of a laptop that makes sense to actually have one of these coolers because it can actually help. 
and the testing purposes for the two different models that we're testing against are gonna go against the top 20 best-selling laptop coolers currently on the market. To get started, I wanted to go ahead and just check idle temperatures. Where right away, it was really easy to see that the IETS GT600 sat right in line with the Climb Everest and the GT500 V2, where I was kind of expecting it to be based on pricing. The GT600 V2, though, was quite impressive, running just a slight bit cooler than the Lano, which resulted in a 22 degree drop in the CPU temperature from stock. Now idle temperatures are great and all, but what really matters is when we actually run a stress test on the system. So to go ahead and do this, I ran all the coolers with a full load stress test using ADA64. And the IETS GT600 V2 didn't disappoint because this was one of the best performing laptop coolers beating out the Lano. And if you look at the max temperature results, running about 24 degrees cooler than the stock setup. For the normal GT600, it also was pretty impressive, but it was just a little warmer than the high RPM GT500 V2 from last year. When it comes to GPU temperature results, we ran Furmark for about 10 minutes to see temperatures equalize. And when looking at the max temperatures that the GPU would reach for this laptop, the GT600 was just a little behind the top coolers. And But the V2 version was neck and neck sitting at 62 degrees Celsius, which is a 22 degree drop compared to the stock setup. Now this performance is great and all, but does it translate into anything that actually matters? Well, when I ran both PC Mark 10 and Performance Test 11, Two great overall benchmarks that do runs various tasks for both the CPU and GPU, we're able to see some of the best performance I've ever gotten out of that laptop. But I will say it's nothing too crazy. But what this means is that the cooler was able to provide some of the most consistent levels of performance across the board, which is likely a result of the system being able to boost clocks for a little bit longer than previously before. Now when buying these types of coolers, you definitely need to consider the noise level, as these are some of the loudest coolers that you can currently buy on the market, including the GT600 V2, which sits at 70.2 decibels but it's actually quieter than the GT500 V2, which sits at 72.8, and the Lana that sits at 74.8. The GT600 on the other hand is actually a lot less noisy because of its slower fan because it sat around 65 decibels which is actually a little bit better. So this may or may not affect you depending if you wear headphones all the time, but it can be quite annoying. Take a listen. So as requested in my last laptop cooler roundup, I also included some additional stats of first testing these coolers with both the coolers running at 50% RPM. This dropped the noise levels by 11.4 decibels for the GT600 V2 and 6.2 on the GT600, which resulted in only about a two to five degree increase, but this was still way above a lot of the other competition. And one other aspect that I also wanted to include was to see how well the dual layer dust filter that's included affects performance and does it hinder performance in any way. Well, this actually was not that big of a deal, as it only affected temperatures by maybe one to two degrees max. So for me, I'd probably still run the cooler with the actual dust filter, but if you do want to run it at 50%, that still actually works, and you're gonna get some great noise levels while still getting really great performance. So with all that said, do I recommend the GT600 or GT600 V2? Well, let's start by looking at the pricing of the GT600 base model. That starts around $95, the V1 goes up to 105, and this one right here goes to 115. Comparing this to the other models I've tested, you need to consider what you're gonna be using this cooler to do because this is definitely the top end of the market. If you want the absolute best performance, hands down, the GT600 V1 or V2 make a lot of sense because it's built a little bit better in my opinion and is a little quieter than the Lano laptop cooler. But the Lano has been on sale lately for even cheaper, so if you can find that as a good value, it's definitely something to consider. I also think that the older GT500 is also a tremendous value, as it's over $15 to $25 cheaper in a lot of cases, and it's pretty close when it comes to the performance, to the point where I think it's definitely better for a lot of people to buy the GT500 V2 over the plain GT600, especially if you don't mind the noise level. However, if you don't need or want to spend a ton of money on one of these coolers, because these are very high-end coolers, I've always been impressed by the Kaibin 2 fan or Lines 2 fan coolers, which both perform really well, way above their price of only $12, which is a really great value. 
Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If there's any other laptop coolers you want me to take a look at, let me know in the comments down below. And if you haven't checked out our original video testing out the top 20 best-selling laptop coolers, go ahead and check that out over here, and I'll see you guys in the next one.